Do you remember the movie Boys in the Hood where Doughboy asked his buddies, do y'all want to see a dead body? Well, I'm asking you all, do you want to see a clear-cut case of police brutality and attempted police cover-up and corruption? If so, stay tuned. Hello, I am Attorney Augustus Corbett, one half of the Defiant Lawyers, and each and every week we bring you at least one legal analysis of some story that's trending regarding politics, policies, personalities, or pop culture to empower you with the information you need to defy this unjust legal system and to nullify systemic racism. If that interests you, and it should, go ahead and click the subscribe button, click the bell, like, share, and comment on this video. Thank you very much. That will help us move up in the algorithm and YouTube will reward us. So we appreciate your support. But like I promised you, I'm going to show you a clear cut case of police brutality. You could call this changing a tire while black. It is despicable. It is despicable what happened to this young man. And we know that this sort of thing happens all the time, right? We have been saying this for years, but there is a game changer. There is a game changer. And you want to know what that game changer is? Yeah! The cell phone. The cell phone. That changes everything. That changes everything. Because now we can show proof of what's happening out there on the streets, in the streets, what they are really doing to us because of someone's smart decision to pull out their cell phone and to record those incidents. Now, of course, you got to do it safely. Don't get yourself shot because they'll shoot you and then say, hey, I thought he was pulling out a gun. So do it smartly, do it safely, but do it. I pull out my cell phone anytime I see a police officer arresting or stopping an African-American and I can do it safely and not do it in a way that interferes with the police officer's work. You don't want to do that either because then they could charge you with interfering with their official duties or some other trumped up charge. But if you can do it, do it because they make all the difference in the world and a cell phone made all the difference in the case that I'm about to show you right now. So let me show you, as I promised, let me show you this video. Stand up. Right there on the front of the car. Hey, I don't got I ain't doing s I got good right there. I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm saying what you saying? Oh yeah, fuck. I'm not Oh my god! Up. Okay, 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 oh damn, damn, oh my fuck. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. You want it again? No, man. Shut the f you was big and bad. It is just despicable what you just watched. This young man, let me bring his face up. This young man, Michael Washington, and this cop, don't know her name, but Michael Washington is her victim. You saw her engage in clear cut. I mean, it is clear cut police brutality. Because what she did was she tasered him while he was in compliance, handcuff, defenseless. And of course, she's cursing him out, talking to him like a boy, and he's crying. He's weeping. You heard all of that. And that taser in his back and she tased him from what I understand the second time. 
allegedly she tased him once already. And they had done nothing wrong. I mean, him and a couple other folks were changing the tire. And she stopped and asked him for his ID, from what I understand. And he didn't want to give her his ID because he said, I'm not under arrest. So you don't, you know, you don't have right to my ID. I, I would advise you to just go ahead and give him the ID, you know, and just try to de-escalate the matter because obviously that could have ended up a lot worse. We thank God it didn't. But if you can, just go ahead and give him the ID and try to avoid uh, confrontations with the police. Now, don't give them statements and all that. You don't have to do that. You have a Fifth Amendment right not to give them any sort of statements. But just identifying yourself, go ahead and, and do that. In fact, here in Texas, if you're stopped by a police officer and you're in your car, you have to give them your driver's license. Otherwise, you're going to get a failure to ID type charge. All right. And then once they arrest you here in Texas, then you are obligated also to give them uh, your identification to identify yourself. So to avoid any of that, I advise to go ahead and just give them your ID and don't argue with them out there on the streets, okay? Because that's the sort of thing that could happen. She could have just as quickly pulled out her gun. So try to avoid that. Anyway, what she did to him was excessive force. It was police brutality. He was handcuffed. He was in compliance. He was not fighting with her or wrestling with her. None of that. You saw it for yourself. Just clear-cut police brutality. But it didn't stop there because guess what happened? Then they charged him with trafficking, fentanyl-laced cocaine, which is a felony offense. Then they charged him with possession of a gun by a felon. They also charged him with obstructing government operations, charged him with resisting arrest. We clearly didn't see that. And first degree possession of marijuana. They charged him with those charges after she violated him with that taser. But guess what happened? Because again of this little invention right here, <laughs> they were able to show that she lied about those charges. She lied about those charges. They were able to show it because of the videotape. Just imagine if there was no videotape. So what happened because of the videotape? The trafficking charge dropped. The possession charge dropped. And according to his attorney, they are trying to get the other three charges dropped. All because of the cell phone. Yeah! Without that, that young man today would be in a world of trouble. Because those charges likely would stick. He at least would be in jail because they put him on a put him under a five hundred thousand dollar bond. Half a million dollar bond. His family could not get him out. I mean, that would take between ten and twenty percent which is what, fifty dollars to $100,000? Most families don't have that kind of money just sitting around. So he would be at least at a minimum sitting in jail, rotting in jail on some trumped up charges. <laughs> but for, and I'm going to keep going back to this little invention, but for the cell phone. But for the cell phone. So when the video came out, yes, they had to drop both of those felony charges. Isn't that wonderful? They had to drop both of them. And the cell phone also showed her brutalizing him for no reason. So his attorney says they're going to be filing a multi-million dollar lawsuit against the police. And I presume the town. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So let me give you just a little bit of information about the type of case this is. This is a 42 USC section 1983 civil rights case. 
this particular section of the of federal law applies to, as it says, every person who under color of any statute or under authority of any statute, ordinance, regulation, custom, or usage of any state or territory or of the District of Columbia subjects or causes to be subjected any citizen of the United States or any other person within the jurisdiction thereof to the deprivation of any rights, privileges, or immunities secured by the Constitution and laws shall be liable to the party injured in an action at law. What does that mean? That means that when a person has the authority under some statute or some ordinance or some regulation, like a police officer or a bailiff or a correction officer, anyone who does something and they have authority uh, from a statute or an ordinance or so forth, and they violate your right, then you have a claim against them. You have a Section 1983 civil rights case against them. It is really, really important. This law here, we use this law. My law firm used this law. We have cases now in federal court of police officers who have brutalized our clients. This law is really, really, really important. It started out as the Ku Klux Klan law, and then it became Section 1983. So this is the particular law that we use to hold police officers and bailiffs and correction officers, anyone, again, under the authority of the state or city or town, and, and they violate your right, you have the right to sue them in federal court, sometimes in state court. Now, what do police officers do with these kind of cases as well as the city? Because you can sue both the police officer and the city or town. But those are not easy cases. They are very tough cases because I can tell you already what they're going to do. They do it in every case. They're going to hide evidence. That's what they tried to do in this situation, right? They trumped up these charges. Uh, the officer out there on the street, she came up with these charges, I presume, or her supervisor or whomever. And by the time those charges got to the DA's office, the DA said, basically, <laughs> we got a problem here. Okay, where is where is the cocaine that's that's laced with fentanyl? Turns out he was not a felon. He had a gun, but it is legal to have a gun in most states. If you are not a felon, turns out the man was not, is not a felon. I'm like, what? Really, when I when I heard that he was not a felon, I'm like, whoa. They just completely tried to cover this up and create these bogus charges. That's what we're dealing with with, with police officers. Remember, policing of African Americans in this country started as slave patrols. They were the ones on horseback who were out there trying to capture runaway enslaved black folks who were trying to get to freedom, something that they shouldn't have had to fight for in the first place. So policing started from that energy. That's the foundation of policing in this country. And it's the reason why we continue to see all these police brutality cases, excessive force cases, and subsequent cover-up. But you have rights. And again, most importantly, I cannot stress it enough, you got cell phones. Record every time if you are in a car or you with someone and the police stop you, whether it's on the street, whether it's in the car, you should pull out your cell phone. But do it safely. Now, please do it safely because you know what they'll do. As an African-American, they'll shoot you real fast and, and say they feared for their life and that you were pulling for a gun as far as they knew. So do it safely and don't do it in such a way that you interfere with them doing their job. So stay your distance, right? But do record it because oftentimes it's the only proof that someone has.
because when it comes down to getting evidence from the police department or from the town or the city, body cams were not on, body cams are missing, body cam footage, dash cam not on, and you know the police officers who are there witnessing everything, you know about that thin blue line, they're not gonna tell on each other. So oftentimes the absolute only thing that you will have to prove your case is your cell phone. So you make sure, make sure you get footage or have the person who's with you to get footage in these cases. So I promised you I was going to show you a clear cut case of police brutality. And I did. I kept my promise. That's clear. She tasered that man. She deprived him of his constitutional rights. And she had no authority to do it, no, no reason to do it. She didn't even have, quite frankly, she didn't even have reasonable suspicion from what I understand to even stop. They weren't doing anything. They were changing the tire. So she didn't even have reasonable suspicion to walk up to them and start questioning them. I mean, all of that will come under serious scrutiny, and it should. So it's a clear-cut case of police brutality, but whether it is or it's not, you can, you can count on these things right here happening. Number one, they're going to hide evidence. Number two, the officer is going to argue that he has or she has qualified immunity. Okay, in other words, she is protected by the law from her actions. She's definitely going to argue qualified immunity. The first thing the city is going to do is they're going to file what we call a 12B6 motion and try to get the case dismissed. And they're going to keep right on filing them, trying to get the case dismissed. So you're fighting those uphill battles with these cases. First, again, you got to fight like crazy to get the evidence, but we do, we will in those cases. I'm sure this guy's lawyer will. Then you got to overcome the qualified immunity that police officers have, which is by the way, is so important, very important that we get folks in Congress who will pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Look it up. And the city, again, is going to try to get themselves dismissed from this case. And if they don't, then they're going to come back with summary judgment uh, motion and try to get dismissed that way. So it, it will not be an easy case, although you saw a clear cut case of police brutality right in your eyes. They're still going to fight it. That's why you need a cell phone. That's why you need a cell phone footage. OK, so. Uh, I wanted to show you that that's what we're contending with. We are fighting back. And I'm telling you, it is a fight. We get calls to our office every single day of people who have been brutalized by police officers in some way. Sometimes it's just rudeness. Other times it is violations of their constitutional rights. Every day we get those calls. So keep fighting. Do it smartly. Do it safely. Don't do it out on the streets. Don't get into resisting arrest and end up with not only a resisting arrest charge, but also an assault on a, on a peace officer or a police officer. You don't want any of that. Don't want to give them any reason to, first of all, shoot and kill you out there. And you don't want to give them anything in court to hit you back with when you start saying that you were brutalized by the police. All right. So. Again, I am Attorney Augustus Corbett, one half of the Defiant Lawyers, and we bring you this kind of content consistently to enable you to fight this unjust legal system. This is an unjust legal system. They have all sorts of things in the law to protect police officers and to protect white supremacy, quite frankly. So we're trying to empower you to fight back and how to overcome this unjust legal system as well as the systemic racism that we see in our nation. I am Attorney Augustus Corbett. Thank you for listening. Peace. Thank you. 
That Corbin and Corbin legal team Fighting for the rights of the people that file the daughter team Investing in the youth when the system ain't treating them equal Providing truth for our people, we able to reach them So anytime you get accused for a crime And Lord knows you ain't do it We here to get you through it Exemplifying prudence and glorifying God Making sure you're compensated for other people's doings Our vision is to be one of the best We're small enough to focus on your matter Throughout the neighborhoods of Dallas Working constantly and making sure your rights are protected A firm team of lawyers, aggressive, effective A team that has your back in the courtroom Two well-spoken black lawyers in the courtroom Investing time and resources when it's evident That you were treated wrong Now you walking out of Dallas courtroom with a settlement Corbin and Corbin The father-daughter legal tag team that has your back in the courtroom Our purpose is simple They obtain the favorable outcome